The payment processing industry looks pretty simple on the surface. However, there are many parties involved in this seemingly basic process. Let's start with the participants involved. The cardholder is the person who owns the credit card used to make a purchase. The merchant is business that sells the products or services to the cardholder. The acquirer is the merchant bank that processes credit card transactions on behalf of the merchant. Then there's the credit card brand or network. Visa and MasterCard are examples of networks used to process a credit card transaction. Finally, the issuing bank is the financial institution that issued the credit card. Now, let's see how these participants make a credit card transaction using this example. Bob, a brick and mortar merchant, sells an apple to a cardholder, Clara for $1. Clara inserts her card into a chip reader and the point of sale terminal dials out to obtain an authorization code. Here's what happens next. First, the POS terminal sends the information to the acquirer. The acquirer sends the details to the issuing bank via credit card network, let's say Visa, and requests a payment authorization for a $1 transaction from the issuing bank. The issuing bank checks if Clara has enough money, checks if the expiry date is valid, and verifies many other things, including matching Bob's business address and cardholder's billing address. That's why you always need to call your bank if you travel abroad and would like to use your credit card in a different country. Once the issuing bank confirms that everything is correct, it issues an approved authorization code and sends it back the same way it received an authorization request, through Visa and the acquirer. Bob sees the approved message on his POS terminal. The issuing bank places a hold for $1 on Clara's credit card account. For Bob to receive the money for the sale, he first needs to close the batch. As cardholders come in and buy apples, all authorizations are stored in the POS terminal in a batch. And to become a deposit in Bob's account, he needs to settle the batch. When Bob settles the batch, each authorization travels back to the respective issuing bank for a final clearing. The authorizations travel via the same channels as before. First, they go to the acquirer and then via credit card networks to the issuers. Each issuing bank removes the hold and withdraws actual funds from the cardholder's account instead. Next, the acquirer funds the merchant's bank account. Now, what about the processing fees? The credit card networks bill the acquirer interchange fees for all of Bob's sales once the batch is settled. The acquirer then bills Bob either on the same day, sales minus fees, if Bob is on daily billing, or the acquirer bills Bob at the end of the month for all the sales processes in that month. The cardholder gets billed by its issuing bank, and that's how credit card transactions work.